Back in 2002, the salvage squad tried to get an old Thames fireboat, the Massey Shore, up and running. It was quite a saga, and it ain't over yet. It's not every day that you come back to something that you've worked on and find out that she's become a star. But that's what's happened to the Massey Shore, this fantastic Thames fireboat built over 70 years ago. Launched in 1935, the Massey Shore was the pride of the London Fire Brigade. Her massive pumps fought fire in London's Docklands for almost 40 years. But since the early 70s, she's been retired, quietly ending her days up Deptford Creek, where Axel, Jerry and I first found her. On first inspection, she didn't look all that bad. A bit of rotten wood here, a bit of rust there, chip paintwork everywhere. Something but something below. told us there would be problems down below. Ah, it's Claire, come and have a look at these. Whilst we were having a snoop in the engine room, Suggs was meeting the man who's devoted his life to keeping the Massey afloat, former fireman Phil Ray, who found her abandoned in the early 70s. I want to say, finally, I happened to be on the Woolwich Ferry one day, and there she was with a great canvas awning over her, moored alongside the Woolwich Ferry, looking very forlorn and, and lost in about 1971. I was disgusted at the state of her. She was dumped there and was an, left there as an afterthought, and not, obviously not going to be anything done with her. You can see how bad she was even there. Not, she, she was just wedged near a public car park and used as a piece of walkway. We buy the fireboats and we get rid of them don't replace them and don't try and save them. This one was designed as a fireboat, specifically as a fireboat, it's not a conversion. And it's important that we keep a bit of London's history and National Fire Brigade history running. Right from that moment, keeping the Massey Shore afloat became Phil's obsession. I like a good challenge. I'm one of these people who get me teeth into the thing, I keep going. I don't take no for an answer, I'm afraid. I've always been like that. And I I'm, I'm certainly would have fought hard and long and hard for her. But for all Phil's magnificent efforts, the Massey was only floating when we found her, not running. Our task was to get her chugging up the Thames and firing her hoses once more. And it'd be lovely to see her coming down the Thames yes. with the hoses with going all the water coming out everywhere. Well, what we're going to do is we're going to take it away, Phil, and you can't see it, but when you do, hopefully, right. it'll be all, gun all guns lovely. blazing. OK. To kick the job off, we moved her upstream to South Dock in Rotherhide to meet up with Station Officer Dave Rogers, a mate of Phil's and stalwart of the Massey Shore Preservation Trust. It was only then we discovered just how knackered one of her huge engines really was. Dave, we've had a wander around looking for things to do, and one big thing was a piston not in the engine. No. That's uh, one of the major problems. The engine will have to be removed from the boat in order to uh, put the piston back. The and whole thing? Are you absolutely sure? Indeed. Yes, it's going to have to come out, I'm afraid. Having two working engines was crucial to our success. One will be needed to shift her and the other to power her pumps. Restoring the broken one was to be the biggest task of the whole restoration. It was a monster job. Even getting the engine in and out required a 10-ton crane. And after spending the whole summer stripping her down and putting her back together, would she start? Right, time for the big engine, yeah? Right, now for the big engine. It hasn't been started since we rebuilt it. It'll be all right. It'll be all right. It'll be all right. Yeah. Yeah. She just crossed up and crossed me. Right, there you go. This was the big moment. Four months of work and dozens of late nights had got us this far. And now she was spinning over. Was she about to fire? No. It was a disaster. Tower Bridge was about to open in our honour and Suggs and Phil were already there. There was only one thing for it. Limp up the Thames on one engine and forget sending 3,000 gallons of water flying from her hoses. To say the least, I was a bit depressed about things after all our hard work. I'm fed up about the engine. I'm sort of a bit well, embarrassed. We did the work. We got it, we fixed what was wrong, but she's not running. We just ran out of time at the end of the day. But time is a great healer. Despite the blood, the sweat, the tears, it was all worth it. Look at her now, brasswork gleaming. Well, it will be. But best of all, she's back where she belongs. Her home for over 50 years, Lambeth Pier. Headquarters of the London Fire Brigade's boats, Fire Dart and Firefly. And the hope is she's going to become a permanent attraction here. 
Even better, our restoration really put the Massey back on the map where she belongs. In fact, she's been given star billing at the London Boat Show. It's being held in her old manor, the Royal Victoria Dock, which gives me another chance to show her off by firing 3,000 gallons of water high into the air, just as she did when she fought fires here 30 years ago. But that assumes that this time I can get that pig of an engine up and running. I'm determined that this boat is not going to be towed to the boat show, hence the spanners and the overalls. I'm going to get it fixed if it kills me. And it probably will. I'm visiting the London fireboat Massey Shaw, an old friend with a sick engine, and trying to get her ready for one of the biggest weeks in her 70-year-old life, her debut as the star attraction of the London International Boat Show. Axel, Jerry and I first met her in 2002 up Deptford Creek and were introduced to the huge engine, a six-and-a-half-ton Glenifer diesel we were going to have to take out and strip down. Dave, we've had a wander around looking for things to do, and one big thing was a piston not in the engine. No, that's uh, one of the major problems. But it wasn't just the engine we were going to have to restore. We also had to fix the valves that supply the water to the turbo pumps, sort out the ship's telegraph, and replace her timber rubbing strakes. But working out who was going to do what called for a cup of tea. Oh, what do we think? That engine. It's huge, isn't it? Getting that out is going to be a nightmare. Well, it's an extra heavy lift. I mean, it's not exactly a straight lift, is it? We've got to come out to the side and then up. Well, there's no choice. You've got to partially strip it, get everything out of the way as much as you can, right. and then just give it a go. Who's actually going to do that? Who fancies it? He said, excluding himself. Well, I'll give it a go. Yeah, I'll give yeah. it a yeah. go. Yeah. be. Come on, then. <laughs> Deal done. I, I really fancy having a pop at the telegraph system. See if I can get it to work. It's a little bit precision. I reckon that's the easy one. Well, OK. It is, isn't it? It is the easy it's one. All right, our job. <laughs> OK, right, I'll take something else on, then. I'll take the valves, cos they could be difficult. That's an idea, yeah. OK. Do you fancy a bit of woodwork, Claire? I think I'll just stick... I've got enough for the engine. A bit of woodwork, Jerry? You've seen my woodwork. So I'll take that to me. <laughs> <laughs> me hanging over the side of the boat. Nice one, guys. Yeah. The first task was to take out six and a half tons of engine. Luckily, you can pull most of it apart in the engine room and lug it out bit by bit. So we set to with the spanners. In all, we managed to pull off around two tons of bits and bobs, but that still left over four tons to winch out. <laughs> Steady! Whilst we were struggling with engine bits, Suggs was with Phil Ray at the London Fire Brigade's museum, finding out about the Massey Shaw's namesake. So this is our man, Phil. That's him. Sir That's Massey Shaw. Sir Massey Shaw. Why is our boat named after this gentleman? They decided that they would name it after somebody that was important to the fire service, which was Sir Air Massey Shaw. That's the man that founded the Metropolitan Fire Brigade, or nearly the fire brigade as you know it today. He's a rather fine-looking gentleman. He was. And he's got some rather fancy clobber on as well. In those days, the helmets, they were solid silver. If you were chief officer, you got a solid silver helmet. He was quite a socialite. Oh, yes, he was. He was um, very involved with the Prince of Wales, and the Prince of Wales got involved with the fire service oh, yeah. at the time. He even had his own uniform and got involved in firefighting, had to be rescued at odd times. But that was obviously important because he made it culturally uh, a thing to be looked up to. Oh, that's right. He made the fire service respected where it wasn't before. Massey Shaw might have been an interesting chap, but nothing like as interesting as the Massey's own history, as Suggs found out when Phil took him into the museum's library. Well, what I'm most interested in is the Blitz, because that's got to be the biggest fire the Massey Shaw ever had to deal with. Well, there's some pictures of the Blitz. Yeah. Yeah, certainly a lot of devastation and fire. Now, this article's written by a chap called Cyril Demand. It was written in 1991. What does it say on the fly about him on there? That he was in the fire service from 1925, so he certainly... So he's uh, he'd be 97 now. I wonder if he's still alive. Well, I'm sure the welfare service will help you find him. They'll have records of him. The welfare service? The under fire brigade welfare service, yes. Well, that'd be fantastic if we could find him, someone who actually saw the message short in service during the Blitz. Back on board, old Massey's namesake, we had a bit of a conundrum on our hands. This is 
About six tons, yeah? We're going to strip it down. It's going to leave us about four and a half tons. That has to be lifted out of here. Which gives us a six ton deficit over here. Yeah, the boat's going to... Yes, well, it's going to move, isn't it? It's going to lift. We're going to tip, aren't we? She's going to roll. Mm. Um, I think we should get some ballast in it at some point. Good Maybe idea. Some barrels of water or something. Or something like that. The problem was how to keep the boat level when six tonnes of engine is pulled out from one side. There were even some who feared that the Massey might roll over. Let's pass that up. It's up to you. In the end, we simply placed six huge barrels on one side of the deck and filled them with water to compensate for the weight of the missing engine. There we go, I've got to get some more. With around four tons of water making her list over alarmingly, we wasted no time in slinging the massive engine block beneath a 10-ton dock crane. If Phil Ray could have seen us, he'd have been having kittens. I'd love to see what she looks like at the moment, but I've been told I mustn't have a look. The temptation has been there. <laughs> I have to confess. The Massey is Phil's life, and just looking at photos of her was almost too much. Oh, the Massey sure has been, certainly helped me. Um, it's been a fantastic when you see her in full, um, full working order and actually um, moving up the Thames. To see her actually with the water coming out of her main monitor and pumping uh, 30 tonnes a minute is, is, a, is a fantastic sight. And it's going to be a good thing when, when all this work's done how it's going to improve the vessel. Even though he was banned from the dock, there was one part of the job he couldn't help worrying about. Well, oh, <laughs> he's getting a five-ton engine out of a little hole on the um, deck. Phil had every reason to worry. A big lump of engine swinging in the air can do a lot of damage very quickly. And it's not something you can practice. You just have to go for it. Okay, everyone happy then? Yeah, mate. No, yeah. don't lift yet. Okay, I'm just going to let the oil drain out then for a moment, and then we'll carry on. Go on, keep going. Go on, it's coming up through. Oh, a critical point is when it gets above the deck, and that's going to be free swing. As the crane took the strain, the Massey righted herself, which made getting the engine through the hatch just that bit easier. Yeah. Well done, everyone. Gentlemen, Cheers, ladies, mate. Thank you. Well Getting the engine out was a key moment, but now we had to fix it with the help of fireman Ian Hale, who knows that engine inside out. As soon as the engine was safely in our makeshift workshop, we set to to strip it down and soon found some rather odd components. Look at that. That's a perishing socket. They've got the engine. Nice one. There used to be a tinkling sound. That might be what it is. <laughs> Getting the engine apart was proving to be rather a brutal task. The wheel come off. Whilst Axel and I stripped the engine, Jerry was getting into the pump valves. 